Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kevin McGovern, and I'm here to show you some information on our shoulder. I'm gonna open up this cool app that I have to talk about the shoulder. And it's the whole musculoskeletal system, but we're gonna pare it down and really kind of blow this up here. Um, now we talk about the shoulder, one of the most important areas that we have to talk about is the space. That is your subacromial space. This bone here, which you can feel on the top of your shoulder, that's your, okay. And this is obviously the head of your humerus, okay. And they have a space and that's called your subacromial space, which is very, very um, narrow. Or, or not deep or shallow, however you want to put it. And not that much can fit there to begin with. So as we blow this up, we're gonna to start to put something in. Now, the first thing we put in is our labrum, which is our um, piece of connective tissue that holds the socket, uh, the ball into its socket. And you can see already, we have really shortened that, that subacromial space, okay? Now, as we begin to put more in there, Okay, we got some nerves, some arteries, then right yeah, there's one little piece of muscle in here, okay. That's the first part of your rotator cuff. <clears throat> That's called your supraspinatus tendon. Supraspinatus, that is one word, but take my word for it. <laughs> now, what that does is for the first 15 degrees of movement, any movement, out away from the body, the supraspinatus pulls the head of the humerus into the socket to hold it in place for the first 15 degrees, okay? That's a vital concept that we uh, should have when talking about um, the shoulder. Now, and you can see again, the supraspinatus right in here, okay? Of course, one of the most important tendons and you know, like a lot of things with the body, is a pretty good machine, but it's also the, one of the smallest tendons. So we can add the rest of the rotator cuff in, these muscles here in the back, um, kind of these guys here. And really how you injure those is really kind of two ways. One is kind of being dragged or, or a traction injury from your, uh, your arm being yanked on or falling in an outstretched arm. Um, and that happens. But when we talk about really kind of common injuries of the shoulder it's really people that are kind of working overhead um or really have through basic movement really broken down this space and how does that happen um, it's really a concept uh, one of the most important concepts um, that you have to know about the upper extremity is scapular depression okay now what is that well our shoulder is attached to our scapula, which is here. And our scapula is really the only bone that really only has one ligamentous attachment, and that's over here in the front. Okay, these guys here, um, if you know of a quarterback that has fallen, kind of on a, been tackled and driven into the ground, you'll hear a separated shoulder. That is what these guys are here, the front ligaments. And that's pretty much the only ligamentous attachment of our shoulder blade to our uh, rest of our body. So the shoulder uh, <clears throat> has a tremendous amount of movement as we know, but like I said, attached to the shoulder blade, which is really swimming in our back, okay? And we've added some, uh, like I said, the rotator cuff uh, muscles here. They're coming into play. And I want you to now, so the whole muscle structure I want you to pay attention to where the fibers are going. So our middle and lower trap, middle and lower trap, the fibers are going in a downward uh, movement, including here our lat as well, and part of our rotator cuff. The fibers are moving south. We look at here, our upper trap, which is a source of a lot of tension and aggravation for a lot of people. You'll see the fibers are going up, okay? That's very important. So when we talk about our shoulder moving in any kind of movement, even if it's a circular pattern or whatever, that's supraspinatus. Remember that? That's way in here. So our supraspinatus in kind of this game of mousetrap pulls, oops, 
So it's the 15, first 15 degrees, pulls that head of the humerus into the socket to hold it there. Now, what's then supposed to happen as our scapular depressor muscles are supposed to turn our, our, um, or depress our shoulder blades so that actually the socket, even though the movement is being depressed, our socket is actually turning upwards to help the shoulder go around in a circle, okay? So <clears throat> one more time, as we take this away, we'll see the socket here, okay? We want to prevent from banging up against the top here. That supraspinous makes its pull, and then our shoulder blade depresses this way, but really turns the socket upwards. Okay, so this whole thing is moving like, uh, like the I guess the wheel on a ship, right? We're turning it so that we don't bang up against the top of our acromion here, because when tendon bangs against bone, um, bone wins. And that is a mechanical impingement that is the um, basis of pretty much every shoulder injury. So, and the movement that causes that or lack of movement is the inability to depress our shoulders to move in this direction. Why? Because of our upper trap here, which I call the big brother of the bully. It's constantly shrugging. We're shrugging. We're forwardly flexed as a, as, a, as a population. We're sitting all day. Our posture is bad, which all adds into this guy. So once our upper trap fires first, that shoulder goes up, that shoulder blade doesn't turn correctly. And what we have is a impingement because essentially we can't have um, what I would call two elevators going to the top. We can't have both our shoulder wanting to go up and our shoulder blade. So when our upper trap fires, and I can tell you after 28 years of practice, it's very, 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 very rare for someone to come in with a shoulder problem and have good scapular depression. Everyone has over facilitated upper traps. Now, not only is this lack of this initial movement, which I really call the first Lego block of movement of the uh, upper extremities, right? So scapular depression or not having scapular depression will cause TMJ, headaches. Uh, this is in addition to shoulder. Uh, a condition called thoracic outlet syndrome, which is essentially the nerve artery and vein that work uh, the lower part of your arm comes underneath your collarbone. Um, that can get impinged. Um, any kind of shoulder problem, and even as far as elbow and carpal tunnel, all from the same bad mechanic. And the reason for that is that scapular depression is the first Lego block or first movement block. And if you're building a Lego set, if you're building a building and the first block is wrong, nothing that we can put on top of that is going to be right. So that's a little history, uh, or I should say anatomy lesson of uh, the upper part of the body and the shoulder involving one movement that has to be mastered. And that, ma and that movement is called scapular uh, depression. And, uh, for more information, you can certainly um, visit me at uh, www.perfectmotionsportstherapy.com. And thank you for listening.